Behind me here in my workshop, I have this Nissan S15 Silvia, and this has a Tomei Genesis SR20 engine, RB25 transmission, Borg Warner twin scroll turbo, along with a bunch of other cool parts that should see it perform at the racetrack. I'm tasked with making a few modifications to get the car ready for the dyno, and these will make the car perform at its highest level and include an all new aluminium intercooler plumbing, stainless steel dump pipe, titanium inlet pipe, and a few other smaller jobs like a chrome ollie wing support and an aluminium power steering reservoir. Now so far I've completed the aluminium intercooler plumbing and the stainless steel dump pipe and I've documented all this to show you in detail the processes and steps that it takes to complete this type of work. You can find these in my skills and projects section at engineertoslide.com which you can access with a monthly or yearly subscription and I've split this project up into part one and part two with more to come. In part one, we complete the intercooler plumbing and we look at why an intercooler is necessary. We run through the materials and products needed to get the job done. We adapt the quick release clamps to both the throttle body and the turbo housing, along with 90 degree elbows on the intercooler end tanks. One thing that a lot of people have trouble with is cutting the tubing required for the intercooler pipes. So I will add in some footage from the project to give you an idea of the level of information I present to you during the project. Cutting thin wall aluminium like this can be difficult and most of the difficulty lies in clamping the part and uh, being able to cut it without it rotating or grabbing in the saw. Uh, if you're using a cold saw then this can be difficult because we need to clamp it up nice and tight so that the often uh, aggressive tooth profile doesn't grab it and rotate it and bruise the material. Um, you have an option to use an angle grinder but this often creates too much heat in the part and inputs uh, impurities into our weld area. You could use a hacksaw, which is really good for this. It's just difficult to keep a straight line. So I find that the band saw set up on a little bench like this works perfect. And I'm using a 14 TPI blade in my band saw. And you only need a small light duty machine for this type of work. And for just a few hundred dollars, you could have a similar setup to this one. The bandsaw probably won't be advertised that it can cut aluminium as it would be designed for timber, but it will do a great job if it's fitted with a 14 TPI blade. Once that's complete, we set up the welder for AC welding and go through the setup and techniques to get the best results. Moving on from part one, we get into part two where we move to the back of the turbo and start concentrating on our dump pipe. We lift the car up on the hoist and go through all of the products that I have selected to produce a high quality stainless steel 3.5 inch dump pipe. Cutting stainless tube can be difficult, so we go through the best methods used for this, followed by the right preparation techniques in readiness for TIG welding. We change the setup of the TIG from AC to DC and focus on getting good argon coverage both inside and out. Overlizing the tube yourself can be a great way to maximize the flow whilst maintaining ground clearance of the car. So I'll quickly add in the steps that I took in this video right now. So I'm using my hydraulic press to overlize this tube. And what I find works really great is using timber on the top and the bottom. And what this does, it sort of softens the bending process and it gives the tube a nice uh, transition from round to oval. And the amount that you overlize the tube really depends on your application and how far you need to crush it. But be careful if you go too far, then what it'll try and do is kink the corners. And uh, this will take a little bit of finishing to get these back out and then using a V-band collar on the opposite side to maintain the roundness on the other end. As you can see, I've completed a fair amount on this project already and there is still more to do. We have plenty of projects like this at engineeredtoslide.com and I believe this is the best way to reiterate what we have learned in the courses. And by choosing a monthly or yearly subscription, you have 24 seven access to both courses and projects. So you won't be left wondering what to do on your project. Thanks for watching.